Here is a super old TV. I guess I don't know what super old is, but this is about 25 years old, so older than all of you. Um, they don't make TVs this way anymore. They're all flat panels, and it's a lot cheaper to make a flat panel TV because these old ones, even a small one, would have a big extended back. And the reason is, is because I set this, I can remove the back, and you have this huge extended tube, hence the way, that's the, where the word tube came from for a television. It was this, this glass tube. Um, so this was all glass, has to be leaded glass, because what you have going on back here is a set of coiled wires that guide a particle beam, an electron beam that is produced at these, in this area right here, it's essentially a fancy light bulb filament that then heats up and then ejects electrons, which are then accelerated to a significant chunk, 5% the speed of light, and then they hit the glass on the front. And this glass on the front has to be leaded because when those electrons come to a stop, that energy has to go somewhere and it becomes x-rays. And those x-rays, uh, if there isn't lead in the glass, then you're essentially uh, bombarding whoever's watching the TV or sitting in front of it with x-rays. Now, do not do this with the TV if you have one of these at home, because these things right here, these big capacitors, they will have a stored charge, a separated charge, and sometimes you can get um, a lot of charge separated and you run the risk for uh, some pretty severe electric shocks, electric shocks that could potentially kill you. Um, in the back of this, you also, of course, have a speaker because when we watch television, we're not just watching, but we're also listening to sounds. I'm gonna plug this in. And I am going to turn this on. Okay, it's on. Um, there's a high-pitched squeal that comes from it. These patterns that you see going back and forth are actually a result of the fact that the electron beam is scanning 500 times a second, and the frame rate of the camera is a finite frame rate. It's, uh, uh, I think, about 30 frames a second going for my video. I'll have to double-check that. But what I can do is I can put a magnet in front of the screen, and what I get is a pattern that's created because of the the magnetic field, the static magnetic field that redirects the moving charged particles. So what moving charged particles do is they move in the presence of a magnetic field. So televisions were essentially particle accelerators that we sat at the business end of for much of the 20th century. Same thing for old computer monitors that had the big back too. Um, I want to show you next, there is a the prototype version of this, the original cathode ray tube, because instead of calling them electron beams, the particles that are in television, they're originally called cathode rays. This is a device that I really like to show on the first or second day of school for the electrical engineering classes. This is a cathode ray tube. It's relatively new. I think this tube itself is probably $3,200. The tube itself, you gotta blow the glass, you gotta make a nice vacuum, you gotta get the electronics inside, the, the, the uh, electrode specifically. The power supply for it, however, is relatively cheap because power supplies are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And so what this is, is you have a set of a wire that gets hot, which is a, like a light bulb, so I'll turn the light bulb on right now. So the light bulb filament essentially gets hot. Imagine that's like a little Christmas light. It's essentially, that's exactly what that is. It just happens to be in a much bigger tube. Now those cylindrical things around that light bulb, you can see one's inside and the other one is just a, a ring. Um, that is a set of accelerating plates. I'm gonna push that up to essentially 300 volts across those cylinders. And what happens is the electrons that are being shaken off of the, of the filament, the glowing orange thing, will then be accelerated into a green looking beam. The green is there because the inside of this tube is not a perfect vacuum. Rather, it's uh, the best vacuum it could be. So there's a little leftover gas inside. And what we see is the wake left by the electrons as they move through that gas. And then the beam 
hits the front of the tube, much like a beam does for a television screen, the older television screen. There's also a set of deflecting plates uh, that the beam goes through, these up and down plates. And what I can do is, keep that focus for you, is I can apply a voltage to the plate, and if I apply a positive voltage to the top plate and a negative voltage to the bottom plate, then what happens is the beam gets attracted to the top plate and repelled by the bottom. If I flip the polarity of the plates, make the bottom one positive and the top one negative, then what happens is the beam uh, is attracted to the bottom one because it's a negative beam because it's electrons, and it's attracted to the bottom plate and repelled by the top one. So I can increase the level of that deflection. So the overall effect of this, I'll back up so you can see this, is this beam will go, can be deflected down or it can be deflected upwards. And so this beam, beam of electrons inside, we know it's charged particles because it's responding to plus and minus voltages, and it also responds to a magnet. So if I put a magnetic field somewhere around it, it starts to curve its path because what charged particles do is they change direction as they pass through magnetic fields. So this is a particle beam, this device itself is a particle accelerator. Um, so I still think it's funny that again, for much of the 20th century, we sat at the business end of consumer particle accelerators as electrons were manipulated 500 times a second up and down across to create the image of pictures hitting stuff in the front. So this is a cathode ray tube. If and when we get back on campus, it is always fun to see this thing in person. But this tube is essentially the foundation for modern 20th century uh, visual technology, sending images over distances. Because the thing is, I don't have to be in the same room as this tube modulating it going up and down. I can send a signal from elsewhere that then modulates it, hence the word tele vision, sending the signal from elsewhere. So again, this whole setup is what we call a cathode ray tube. Um, sets of a filament gets hot, shakes off electrons. There are a set of electrodes uh, cylindrically shaped to accelerate those electrons to about 5% the speed of light. There are deflecting plates to demonstrate what this does, uh, meaning the beam could be bent up or down, and you can also use magnets to bend the beam. And then we make use of it, the engineering piece is to manip manipulate the beam to make a picture on the end when the beam, when the electrons come to a stop.